<laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Sorry. Do you want to Go call ahead. it to this order? Is Matt, right? Yep. Do you want to call it to order first for the recording? Yes, um, I can. Cheryl just started it, so I appreciate that, Cheryl. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm going to head out. Okay. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Thank you much. Right. Well, noise complaints. Uh, obviously, uh, at the town meeting, there was the whole years of complaints discussed. But for this last quarter, there were uh, 378 noise complaints. Most of them were small prop planes um, in constant repetition. Uh, you know, on the days that they were, uh, you know, the, the calls came in. Um, Matthew, I yes. want to. This is this is Claire. How you doing? Yep. I want to go on record as saying I'm no longer making those calls. I'm done. I'm just yep. done. I'm not making them anymore. You and I sat. I called you on your cell phone in the summer. I was in my pool with a plane circling around and around and around. And honestly, you tried really hard, but you couldn't get them to stop. So if you can't calling live. <clears throat> get the tower to pull them down me calling and wasting my time and getting angry isn't worth it so i want to go on record and i'd like this to show in the minutes that we are losing people making phone calls because it's useless and so while it's certainly a statistic that we want to keep up with it should not be taken in any way as any indication of the impact on this neighborhood donna that was you correct no, nope, that was Claire. It was oh, Claire. Claire. I'm sorry, Claire. <laughs> so I would please like to make sure that that's in the minutes. Yep, I have it. Great. Don't you love these meeting recordings? You don't even have to worry quite so much about the minutes. <laughs> well, we do still. You know that. <laughs> um, this is Judy Keene, and I have to agree with Claire to some degree. I have stopped making the phone calls, too, because after 30 years, of reporting planes, it, it didn't make any sense. And, and calling on a, a, a line actually takes so much time out of my day, it's not worth it. And you know, it just ends up making me mad. And so I'm <laughs> sitting at work, I'm already trying to keep my cool, right? Cause I'm at work and there are planes overhead and I'm supposed to call and make a phone. And like, I just get angry at the situation and I don't need any more angry. So I'm not making any more phone calls. Hi, is it possible to make a few comments? Oh, Who yes. Just Who identify yourself, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Steve McGee. Uh, I've been a resident and uh, taxpayer in Old Weathersville for more than 60 years. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about my background because I think I may be uh, substantially helpful to the forum. Um, I was an avionics uh, technician at Brainerd Airport for more than two years when I was a teenager. And I'm a retired uh, engineer and troubleshooter. Uh, I worked for British Air Aerospace for more than 10 years uh, work working on initial guidance systems for the United States Air Force and the Israeli Air Force. Um, I've personally flown over Old Weathersfield uh, myself and with my son and small general aviation aircraft. And um, I just wanted to make all you guys aware that, you know, we have approach plates when it comes to coming into the runway at Brainerd. And it does not show that it's okay if you're flying VFR or visual flight regulation um, to fly over old Weathersfield. And it's quite enticing, especially at this particular time uh, with all the foliage uh, coming up hopefully soon. Um, they're supposed to fly over the river and they go into the airport, but when visibility is very low and you don't have an instrument rating and they got the beacon going, you're just going to fly over. But there's a lot of guys that just don't care and they're going to take the shortest approach with the navigational um, you know, instruments. So um, I just want to make a really, really uh, important point. And that is that, you know, there's no way that Brainerd Airport would be decommissioned because it's an asset to the state and to the federal government, and that will never happen. However, these pilots that fly over Old Weathersfield, which they shouldn't be doing, uh, which I shouldn't have been doing, but um, I apologize for that, but that was many years ago. 
But anyway, uh, this is really an FAA enforcement issue. Now, I don't know if anybody in town has got cameras, like really good Sony or Nikon cameras with a telephoto lens. Um, I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and it's got a really, really good telephoto lens in it. But if anybody's, like, flying over a low altitude or below an acceptable ceiling, Try to get the tail number of the plane. Uh, all U.S. aircraft have a call letter that starts with N, like November. And try to get a picture of that because then you could file a formal complaint with the FAA. You know, calling the control tower at Brainerd isn't really going to do too much for you at all because, uh, in essence, uh, this is really a FAA enforcement problem for general aviation pilots not really following the rules and being sloppy. Well, anyway, that's all I have to say. All the best to uh, everyone in the uh, the forum. All the best to you and your family. Mr. McGee, this is Claire Mead. You've just given us three, two or three points that we all know. First of all, as long as there's an airport, there will be planes. It doesn't matter if we tweak the flight schools or we do this or that. As long as there's an airport, there will be planes. Number two, I mean, that's just a fact. Number two, it's not an FAA. It may be an FAA enforcement for low altitude, but we tried that approach of doing the, the tail numbers and that is an enormous amount of volunteer vigilante to get out there and take pictures. And sadly, not really a very reasonable approach. Number three, the state actually in fact has closed airports, it's consolidated airports. I find CAA's business model to be curious at best. It's using fuel taxes to spread across a number of small airports. Really inefficient, really redundant, staff racing around instead of closing and consolidating into two or three main airports and Bradley, a much more efficient and effective use of fuel tax. So thank you for your comments. Those of us who've been on this for decades at this point, it's always great to have a new voice on the call. Thank you. Thank you. His Thank name you. and spelling. Elaine, yep, go ahead. This is Bonnie. Hello? Is somebody Hello? trying to talk? I think that was Bobby DeBella asking for his name and spelling, is what I heard. Not me, not me, sir. This is Bobby. Oh, sorry, Bobby. That. Yeah, that oh, was sorry, that asking for Steve McGee what this, how the spell his name, and can he give us his email address? Oh, all right. Sorry, Pat. Go ahead. Steve, yeah, are you still on? Steve McGee, I can give my email address if anybody wants it. Yes, please. Okay. Um, my email address is actually my ham radio call letters. It's uh, WA1, Whiskey Alpha 1, uh, PDF, Papa Delta Foxtrot, at cox.net. WA1, EDF, at cox.net? Uh, PDF, like Papa Delta Foxtrot, Ooh, like a okay. uh, Adobe file, personal, you know, a professional document file. Got it. And Mr. McGee, if you just stay on the line too, so that I may add in um, comments on October 26, Kevin Dillon from the CAA, and I know there's someone here, Alex Peterson, you're here, so you can verify this, wrote in a letter, and I'm quoting, as we have previously discussed, the CAA is legally prohibited from mandating particular flight paths or penalizing pilots who fail to utilize the voluntary noise abatement procedures. So this is something that we've wrestled with, like um, others have said, for decades. There is no way to hold anybody responsible who does not abide by the voluntary flight path. So just for your I'll edification. I definitely have to research that, and that's a, that's a very valid point. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. And that's from Kevin Dillon, head of the CAA, in an October 26th letter dated to Mayor Michael Rell. Okay. Yeah, you know, Kev, I just um, have to say one thing really quick, you know. I've lived in old weather still for more than 60 years, and I've, I've always had this problem all the time with low-flying aircraft, even when I was brought up uh, and I was a small child. Uh, they were like cargo planes flying over less than 500 feet and fighter jets and everything else. So 
Um, I really, really think that uh, perhaps uh, we should take this up to a higher level. Perhaps uh, our federal senator, uh, uh, Mr. Blumenthal, and uh, converge and collect uh, all of our our concerns and write him a very formal letter about what's going on because uh, I really think the FAA should do a better job because, believe me, I deal with the same problem. I hear, you know, low-flying planes, general aviation aircraft, Pipers, Cessnas, which I've flown in myself, you know, hundreds if not thousands of times. And, uh, you know, it's very, very irritating and, you know, you know, we have a really wonderful community here, and we don't really need to deal with that. And really, the FAA should do their job. And if they're not doing their job, or they have technicalities, then we have to take it up to a higher level. Anyway, sorry about making your ears fall off. <laughs> no, oh, no, you. please. No, nope. you're, you're no, always happy to hear new voices. Thank you. Bonnie, this is Bobby Spell. May I interject, please? Yes. Go okay. ahead. Uh, friends, Friends, this is Bobby DeBella, and I guess I'm new on the committee. It's been 33 years since I joined the committee. <laughs> and and uh, Cindy Greenback will recall it was about a year ago when I emphatically pointed out that, in my opinion, based upon decades in public safety, uh, mostly uh, the state and east of the river here, that, in my opinion, these planes should not be flying over old what is failed to function is anything could happen and it could be a catastrophic cataclysmic situation just because of that now the flight path is over the river where it should be where it's supposed to be and these people and the aircraft that are cutting for whatever reason as the uh mr mcgee pointed out earlier uh th that's wrong and and we have to look at it uh, Cindy, you agreed with me then, and nothing has happened. I, not, it's not on your shoulders, though. Nothing happened by the committee. But in my opinion, folks, it's a public safety hazard as to what's going on there as a function of the myriad planes, a copious amount of them. They're going over, and it is not right to have that uh, situation occurring all of these years when we know that anything could happen, and it would be catastrophe on the ground thank you thank you bonnie you know what Can I make one more comment steve mcgee yes steve go ahead it's bonnie thank you very much um yeah mr DeBello uh really made a really really profound statement and i can relate exactly to what he was saying uh i remember y'all hear the plane ever had but... yeah I, I did can you guys hear me okay Go yeah. ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You were kind okay, of drowned well, out anyway, by the jet that just went overhead. Comment, I remember when I was a young lad, probably about 10 or 12 years old, walking down Garden Street in Old Weathersfield, and I saw a plane with a sputtering engine at a low altitude, and I thought for sure it was going to crash in the neighborhood. Uh, yes, another sir. Another time, uh, I actually saw my grandfather's backyard, uh, not too many houses from where I lived. Um, a biplane doing aerobatics at a relatively low, you know, low altitude. So uh, we got a serious problem here with uh, air traffic over Old Weathersfield. And if the FAA is not going to enforce the approach plate to pilots and there's going to be no enforcement, I think really the, the only protocol we probably have, uh, there's no way the airport will be shut down. That's not going to happen. No, but no. Uh, we really need to take this up to a higher level. I think at a, uh, a federal level, I, at least a, I, I, a federal I, I, citizen, uh, our federal senator, and oh, oh. whatever it takes, because this has been going on for decades. Anyway, thank Mr. you so McGee, much. Mr. McGee, this is Bobby DeBello once again. Uh, a few years ago, we did uh, try that vehicle through Congressman John Larson, and okay. after yep. waiting, waiting several months from the FAA to get back to us as a committee, we got nowhere with them. They, okay. they like well, you know, he's only a congressman in East Hartford. I, I would try. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking of pursuing. For, he's first Avenue. district. First district. Okay, you're I've right. I've had you excellent could, results with Senator Blumenthal on a number of federal matters, and Certainly. I think if you're okay. if you're at a Senate level, 
It's a lot better than a congressional level. Uh, uh, this is Bobby DeBell again. Uh, uh, Mr. McGee, you're absolutely right on that. However, I, I am, I am absolutely positive that I'm on the right track with this public safety hazard to the people in the presumed flight path of Old Wethersfield, in and out of Brainerd. And, and I, I think- I agree with you 100%. Uh, it's just a matter of you. time. Well, yes, it is, sir. But in that respect, I think we should go at it from both angles. The one that you suggest through Mr. Uh, Senator Blumenthal. And I also, I really also feel that we should do something right away. Uh, we just can't wait. I waited a whole year for something and nothing happened about the public safety situation. Now, now it's simple. Let's have the planes go over the river like they're supposed to. That's the flight path, and I mean it. Go ahead. So can I ask a question, please? I'm gonna take this conversation in a slightly different direction. We have someone, Alex Peterson, who I don't know. And so I wonder if Mr. Peterson would like to introduce himself and let us know what his role is and how he came to be on this meeting. Sure, my name is Alex Peterson. I am uh, the Director of Government Affairs with the Connecticut Airport Authority. I'm, I'm simply here to, to listen to everything that everyone has to say. Excellent. Tonight. So I just wanna tell you, uh, and I'm gonna kind of, Bonnie, sorry, I'm gonna kind of divert us uh, on the agenda a little bit. Um, I have a copy of Mr. Dillon's letter in my lap, and I want you to know how offensive I find it. And if Mr. Dillon would like to give me a phone call, I'd be happy to discuss it with him. For those of us who've been on this commission for decades, the ideas that he is re recommending are retreads, and that's all. We've talked about flight schools. I used to have brown hair, it's now gray. We've talked about flight schools forever. Sometimes the flight schools are better, sometimes they're worse. It's based on who is enrolled at the time. CAA cannot control a flight school. All it can do is to, is to impact the instructors and what they teach. The flight school cannot control its students while they're in the air, number one. Number two, the problem is in flight schools, it also controls jets. And what we have seen over time, because I've learned so much from Matt and other people on this commission, uh, other people who come to these meetings, the makeup of planes is moving away from small private ownerships to flight schools and jets. And the jets are the ones that with all due respect, Bobby and Mr. McGee will never go over the river because they can't. They're flying on instruments and their risk managers will not allow that. And that's been said, a hundred million times over again. So to come out and come up with a letter like that is if this is somehow going to be this collaborative, helpful thing and going to make immediate change is just offensive. I feel so personally offended to have sat at these meetings month, year after year after year and to have this be the response. You tell him he poured gas on the situation. Napalm, air, how about this? He play, he put plane, airplane fuel on the situation. And Mr. Peterson, you should respond to Mr. McGee, honestly, by saying that there is no way that anybody can mandate the voluntary flight path. It is just that, voluntary. And that the acceptable designated flight path comes right down Main Street onto runway 220. I mean, that's that's why you're trimming the trees there. That's where the runway is going to be ex extended. I mean, that is the FAA designated flight path. Can I jump in real quick? Strictly voluntary. Please, please, Matt. Uh, yep, yep. No, just I, I wanted to look up on the previous comments about the approach plates. And actually, the approach plate for the River Visual Runway 2 does reference the noise sensitive area. And it, I, I wish I could show you it on here, but it's too bright. I've seen it. Okay, and it shows over the river approach. Um, so, I mean, that is out there to avoid the noise sensitive area. I mean, it the is. FAA and the power did try some but of it. But Matt, right, jets can't do that. No, it, it is hard for a jet. Yes, with cavitation close to the ground, it is yeah. harder. The um, jets can't, they don't uh, have the turn rate. Right. Make a comment when you guys get a chance. Who is this? I'm sorry, Steve. Uh, Steve McGee. 
Yeah. All right, Steve, why don't you help us uh, at least because I'm going to have to do some research, Claire, for you on the FAA and I'll get back to the committee. But go ahead, Steve, and then we'll move on. Okay, I'd like to address uh, what uh, Mr. Peterson said. Uh, the approach plate clear, clearly shows that you should fly over the Connecticut River, but no general aviation pilots follow that, especially if they're flying VFR in inclement weather uh, and they have the beacon going. They're just going to go in the shortest way you know possible. Um, you know, if we, I, I just want to make a really, really strong, profound statement, and that is, if our federal and state governments can't enforce. Uh, FAA approach plates to be uh, observed, then we need to take it up to a higher level. And probably the best way is to get it into the media. And what I'm proposing, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a television producer, a motion picture producer, uh, a composer, and uh, a sound designer, and I'm quite equipped to do documentaries uh, with a whole uh, crew. And perhaps we should all converge together and do a documentary on this particular problem with everybody giving us as much input and photos and as much media as possible. And then we can, we can send this documentary and publish it and show the magnitude of this problem that must be addressed. And if our state and federal governments can't do it, let's get it out in the media and say, what in the hell is wrong? Well, uh, Mr. McGee, this is Bobby DeBella. I think you have a good point there. However, please, folks, let's not get away from the public safety aspect of it. I've been in the field all my life. I'm the founder of LifeStar and other, other things. Be that as it may, don't slight the public safety. I think that's the greatest tool we have to get a change because it's, it's, it's a terrible point, Mr. Situation. DeBella. Pardon me, sir? Uh, awesome Bobby. point. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. McGee. I appreciate it, sir. Bobby, develop Bobby Bye. can I just respond to your concerns? Um, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Judy Keene. We have already sure, had two incidents at, at Brainerd that I know of. One where a pilot went into the, um, the bank of the Connecticut River and was killed, and another where a flight school student downed a plane near Pratt Whitney purposely, purposefully. And oh yeah, so yeah, had, and he hit the. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. And, and by the we've way, already, that was main two years hold ago. Hold it, folks. Street, one person uh, at a time, Judy. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Bobby. It was a couple of years ago, but there mm -hmm. also was an incident, Bobby, where you were in Old Weathersfield and saw a jet coming very close to the church steeple. And I reported that. Yes. Yes. And you're so, right. You you have a good memory. It was the last the la uh, last meeting I think we had. And yeah. I, I was, I was totally upset when I saw yeah. that. I said, "This, this, this can't go on." No, clearly, it can't. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'd you also like to, I'd also like to just say that we've had um, several very public incidents in uh, with plane crashes. Two in Connecticut. The one, the last one was in Farmington, where four people were killed when a plane had the brake on. You know, pilot error does happen. Um, and there was another one uh, outside of our area um, in, uh, in California near Santana High School where a UPS driver was killed. So there are, there are incidents. Here's your reminder. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. So this is Claire again. I want to just take that conversation right back to Mr. Peterson and um, put his little, have some yellow around his screen the way it is ours when we're talking. Um, Bobby, you need to, you've got some interference coming and maybe it's a, it's a on hold. Um, Mr. Peterson, what, what would you like to tell us at this point in time? Uh, Ma'am, I, I, I really am here to hear the concerns of the group tonight. Um, I, I don't mean to detract. I know Matt speaks to the group and provides um, more technical knowledge, frankly, than I can. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really am here to, to listen and, and to hear the concerns from- Lovely. From so what I would like you to tell me is that you heard clearly what I said about Mr. Dillon's letter 
And I would like it to go clearly back to him exactly that it's political pandering in an election season and that I, I am offended. There were lots of things he could have done. What he did was pandering. And, and I'm sure you, that Claire, uh, on it. Alex, Alex will do that, Claire, because yes. that's Thank why you. he's here. Yes. Can I, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Sarah. Okay. Um, I would also like to speak to Mr. Peterson quickly that I've um, made multiple, many, many, many phone calls. And what I've been told at previous uh, meetings by uh, Matt Kelly is that they need um, identifying information. What, what does it look like? What is, you know, what are the numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, as well as calling and complaining about the height of the planes, because I believe, I mean, I, I, looked it up and with somebody else and it's they're supposed to be a thousand feet above structures if that's accurate and I um, called him almost almost accurate just so you know on, okay. on departure the aircraft you know uh, this goes back to the federal aviation regulations airman information manual they can't begin initiating a turn until 700 feet at Brainerd um so that you know, depending on the speed and, and the climb out. Yeah. That okay, so I don't I don't have any idea what that means. Nope. Oh, okay. They, they, could, be, they could be lower than a thousand in the pattern as they're taking off to the south. As they're coming up. Yep, as okay. a, if on a two zero heading okay. to the south. So, what, so let me, okay, so that's, we're going aside. What I would like to tell um, Mr. Peterson is I have repeatedly called and I've reported what the planes look like. I've given numbers and I've called and reported that, and I have photographs and I have video. And I've continually reported to this gentleman that this is occurring and said, if you want, you're, if you're so interested in finding out who's flying over the house, I have the information. I have never gotten any call back. I have never been asked to share the photos or the videos that I have or any kind of a response ever, as well as gasoline was um, dropped on my house when I first moved in about 10 years ago and I called and complained and I was told there was nothing that can be done. So that, and then you can get back to your, um, whatever the, you know, the plan is to discuss today, but that needs to be shared. All right, so Alex and Matt, I think you're hearing from a lot of frustration from everyone. And I know you heard that also at the council meeting, so. Uh, anyway, so I think it's important that, you know, um, you take that back to Kevin and a couple others and make sure that perhaps at the next meeting we have another update. Yes, yep, I will, I will do that. Oh, one other thing that I may I please say, um, two meetings ago, I wasn't at the last meeting, but two meetings ago, I specifically asked Matt Kelly if he would please um, reach out to other airports. Um, I'm not a 30 year person on this committee. I have, I've only been in Weathersfield for 10 years and I've been on and off and, and more recently because of the horrible noise, I've become uh, more involved. But I specifically asked Mr. Kelly to reach out to other airports. We were asking him to take some steps and see what other airports might've done that were, um, that were successful in noise abatement. And I have, um, I don't know, I haven't heard anything. Matt, did you ever have a chance to do that? I mean, we, we're constantly in different groups with other airports. You know, in our area, I mean, the houses that are affected here are so close, but they fall below what the FAA considers a, a noise. And I don't, I'm not saying this annoying, but what they consider a DNL, a day night average uh, noise level that would get them involved. You know, under a part 150. We did a part 150 many years ago before my time. Um, and and what's showed, that? What is that, Matt? I'm sorry. It's an uh, FAA, yep, FAA part 150 noise study <clears throat> where there was noise okay. monitoring. We did a, a little bit of monitoring during the master plan uh, for Brainerd a number of years ago. Um, yeah. And using the FAA's numbers, and again, don't blame me, they, their numbers show that it wasn't a noise issue. That's not I'm the not question. That's not the question. That's not the question. No, 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 no. I, I was referencing what other airports. So, 
we're not in a position where we can say we want a noise study when we've had one, a mini one. That's, that's not what, I don't think, I don't think that's, that's not what, what was asked for. No, 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 no. I'm, but what I'm saying is with other airports, other airports have been able to do that and, you know, go down the line with a noise study. We're not going to find out anything from a noise study. There's, you know, there, there's not much, I mean, just by the proximate location of the houses, more, I mean, other than trying to get people to continue to fly over the river, it okay. hasn't been. Working. You agreed to that. You agreed to that. You agreed to, <clears throat> you were going to reach out to other airports. If it was a useless task, that's one thing, <clears throat> but you agreed that you were going to reach out to other airports and see if people, if there's other um, possibilities for dealing with it, that have been successful at other airports. That's what I would like to bring up too. With, so yep, with houses this close, I would say it's not. It's not an obtainable task other than getting a voluntary system going. So are you well, saying that there's no other there's airport no, with No, legally, close? legally. Yeah, w w there's <laughs> my other airport, Oxford, but the noise was greater, same distance to the houses, and ended up with a voluntary acquisition program for 72 homes. But those decibels, the, the, and again, I don't want to get technical, what it's called much DNL. Bigger, they have bigger planes, <clears throat> right, Matt? They've got big corporate. Much, big, much louder. Right, much bigger. Um, you couldn't have a car alarm, you couldn't have a house alarm at those And houses. that's why, I'm going to interrupt you for <clears throat> one second, Matt. That's why a really reasonable plan would be to close Brainerd and move those operations to Oxford where they've already acquired 74 homes to because the noise was so substantial. The flight schools move, the airport operations move, Oxford's not that far away, and it's already set up for you. You also have mentioned, I think it was Wyndham that actually likes their airport that came up in the hearing before. Maybe you move it to Wyndham and make Wyndham be better. I think that it is, it, to say it's never gonna be, never gonna be changed Again, it's a screwy model to me. It seems very inefficient, very expensive. And of course, CAA is quasi, nobody's really looking at it. And we don't expect efficiency from any kind of government structure like that. All right, I, I had Steve as the last comment and I've let it go a little sorry. bit. Sorry, so. sorry, sorry. No, 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 that's all right, guys. I, I, um, I will be honest with you all. I am really unhappy. If you didn't get it, that letter, and the treatment of it on social media, I'm sorry, unacceptable, unacceptable. And Bonnie, Bonnie, I, I, I think Alex heard that. Kevin, go ahead, sorry. I apologize, I just wanted to ask, and, and I, I don't mean to, to increase clear blood pressure right now, but <laughs> um, Matt, I was just curious if, um, if you guys received a copy of the CAA letter to, to Mayor Rell. Yep, yes, they got it. You did? I sent okay, it out now, today. Yep, I appreciate that. Now, so th those um, acts that the, Mr. Dillon said that he was going to do in terms of engaging the flight schools, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, really, whether what he says or not, at the end of the day, there's no teeth to that, right? You guys can continue to do whatever it is that, you know, your pilots choose to do. Is that is that right? I'm just trying to determine at the end of the day what he's trying, what, what they're going to do to the flight schools, what kind of um, actions that they're going to take. What's going to be the end result of that? Is that going to change anything at all? Or is, it, is this really just a letter? He can't well, answer that. That's his boss's boss's boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to defer that. No, I, look, no, I, Alex I, can Alex can address. I I can't I can't speak for Kevin, but what I can say is that I think because I've seen the letter also. I, I think what he was trying to to get across in that letter was that he was looking to exert pressure in other places um, that that we have been able to in the past. So I I know that that is not sufficient for, for everybody. I, I, I understand that. I've heard that and I, I will bring that back. Um, but I do think uh, what he was trying to get across is that he is trying to take a couple of different um, kind of creative actions that 
have not been taken before after hearing the comments um, at the public meeting last week. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, Bonnie, but I have to say, Alex, they have all been taken before for years and years and years and years. There is nothing new in that letter. So there's nothing new in that letter. And the reason is because there's nothing really that can be done. So what he did is to put the solutions that we've been talking about month after meeting after meeting and put them in a letter to Ralph, who also was then able to use that letter in his political election positioning, which is very suspect. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I, I can tell you that that was not an intent um, on our side. Um, I think Kevin was just following up with the, with the public meeting um, and, and responding um, at, as he said he would, um, but I, I, I will take that back as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, Alex, I think the group would really just like to see some results. So maybe at the next meeting, it's more like, okay, this is what happened. We, we saw some violators, we've contacted them. You know what I'm saying? To give an update of how that has followed through would be helpful. Understood. Thanks. Um, Bonnie, Matt, can you talk about um, uh, any kind of uh, building up updates or any projects or anything? Bonnie, this is Pat. I've been trying to get in. I just need to say I have been here for 30 years, and I am tired of waiting for the improvement, too. If it's going to go on record, then when Alex is listening, um, hear, hear. Thank you. All right, Pat, sorry, I didn't hear you, thanks. Matt, you wanna continue with the next okay. item? Yep, um, well, next item, I think operations, um, they are up, they're uh, year to date, they're up 22%. Um, you know, that's it in a nutshell, I forwarded that out, to or actually I forwarded it to you and then you sent it out to the yep. committee. So every, everybody has those numbers. Um, projects, uh, the only one that's out there that the, you know, everybody knows about is the, the tree project. And that's still a long ways, you know, permitting and, and everything before that moves anywhere. Matt, could I ask you two questions? Certainly. Uh, in the past, you've broken down the airport operations <laughs> for us. You've kind of divided them up between flight schools you know, uh, private pilots and corporate. Can you do that for us again? Percentages. Sorry, I muted myself. Um, it's it's the flight school's a lot higher now. Um, I think I said this at our last meeting, or not the last meeting, the meeting before, um, that who knew during COVID that everybody would start flying lessons. So, you know, we've got, several very active flight schools now um, and you know not only here but we you know we've got students coming in from all over the place New York coming across Long Island Sound to do flight training and um, you know other airports here in the state so uh, I you know I do see a lot more flight training going on right now um, percentage wise sorry yeah percentage wise um, Oh boy, I'd have to I'd have to run those numbers if you don't mind. If I can defer that till next time, but it, it's it's higher than normal. Matt, I just could don't you have run? Could, could you run the numbers and maybe email them to me, and I'll get them out to the group. I will indeed. Thank you. I mean, next time is three months from now, so that will. I know that's why I said know. that, Cindy. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Do I apologize, Cindy, but uh, no, yeah, I mean, right. it, it is definitely higher than years past for uh, flight training. No, so last now time the you question told us, you told us it was 70% flight schools, um, yep. there, virtually no business traffic, and then the remainder was private pilots. Um, no, there was there was some business. I mean, there was some business. There's always some business traffic in and out of there. That's that's you know always going on. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot of private pilots, and but we can't say that you know Joe who owns an airplane isn't flying for business, you know, if he owns the plane. So it, it, it's more of an educated guess or guesstimate for that. But uh, I, I can definitively say there's more flight training going on. 
and that's well, across the, the flight train. The, the flight training is a, is a business <coughs> entity. Flight training is. Yeah, a I mean that's a business, place. absolutely. Yeah. And then on the Bonnie, tree cutting, is... Matt, Kevin Dillon told us that the attempt is going to be to cut the trees this year in the winter. Is that still what you're operating under that as well? I mean, the, no, that it's it's that. Good. You want me to take that? Yeah, they, like good, Matt Barry. said earlier. It, Wait, who is this? Like Matt said earlier, it has Barry. to be. We have to get the license signed off, license agreement signed off by. Harford and Weathersfield, and then then they have to go through the permitting and the easements to do that. Uh, so the, you know, until that gets done, you know, th they plan on one thing, but that's as far as they can go until we can get you know get the permits going. <coughs> is that Barry? Yes, it, it is. Barry, Barry. <laughs> could, could you explain the easement process for those people who are just sitting here, especially Bonnie? What is the easement that you're looking for? Oh, I have the agreement, Cindy. Oh, well, we've never seen it. <clears throat> oh, well, you haven't? All right, I'll, I'll get it out to people. But I, yeah, I okay. have it. I mean, it, it, council hasn't voted on it, but I have it. Okay. So it is an agreement Bonnie... to, to sell the airspace above our land? <laughs> no, that's not really what it is. Barry, maybe, maybe you should explain. It, 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 it is. It's it's the easements to go into the areas to cut the trees after you know afterwards you know going out into the future that we have the rights to go in there and cut the trees or have the trees cut to keep the approaches clean. And so you're not asking for an navigation easement just to cut the trees forever. I I, I don't <coughs> know what the, if it is a navigation easement or if it's just the trees. I have no, no I don't I think so. Agreement. That that goes with the that, that's with uh, Bob Bruno's group in our um, project management. But we can we can check on that. But uh, Bonnie, you have the agreement there that if you want. I do. I don't uh, have it with me right now, but I do. So tomorrow I can get it out. Thank you. Yeah. Bonnie, this is Bobby DeBella. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, I have a question for Matt and or Barry. Uh, gentlemen, uh, as a function of the fact that the resources recovery in the north side of the airport is going to be uh, stopping their operation there, will those stacks come down? And if those stacks do come down, could that encourage more traffic for the north part of the airport, both in and out, and we'll get some relief uh, for, if you will, for Wethersfield? Please? No, no, the stacks can't, no. the, the power plant stacks are still going to be up. The power, the, the Connecticut Resource Recovery, their their stacks are short, a, little, a lot shorter. The stacks well, in the power they, are they're not shorter. in a way. I'm talking about resource recovery only. No, they're not. They're they're, they're pretty tall. They're they look way. pretty tall to me. Uh, yeah, but Matt. but the obstruction the obstruct the obstruction is coming from the power plant stacks. Okay. And, I, uh, and okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, sir. Um, one of the questions we have for you guys, those on the committee, is do you want to continue meeting by Zoom or do you want to start doing this again in public? I think you used to meet at the airport, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this, I vastly this, prefer Zoom. I'm so, on Zoom. Uh, Zoom. You, like Zoom? you want to keep Zoom? with Zoom? Yes. yes um, okay, that's fine. That works. All right. We'll stay that way then until, and maybe I'll ask in a few more meetings. Bobby is a South Korean rapper, singer songwriter, and member of Iconic. Uh, this is uh, Helena Riley. Could I make a very quick comment? Uh, I'm going to have to drop off. I am, uh, yes. I am on the committee. And someone, can someone go on mute? We're here, we're getting background noise. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so, Gosh, how long have I been here now? 40 years? Anyway, um, I just wanted to echo what others have said that the jet, the number of jets flying right down Main Street is definitely, definitely up from what it used to be. And that trend is very concerning to me <laughs> because of course they're, they are much noisier <laughs> and bigger. So um, that, that alone, I think, is a 
good reason to to work hard to to decommission. Um, I do think it's an interesting idea to to reach out to our senators, and I dare say it's been tried in the past. So I don't know what the past efforts with that have been, whether they've been successful or not. But we certainly do need to seem we seem to need some help higher up the ladder if we can get it. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Helena, for and, that. Um, uh, all right. Does everybody see the meeting dates? Um, and is there agreement to keep those dates? Can January I ask 20th? a question, Bonnie? Can I just ask sure. a question? Are we uh, tied in any way to only meeting every quarter? Because it um, seems like the um, the issues come up, and we have to wait three months to get any any uh, forum to share those. We Judy, just I would have monthly. to just double yeah. check how the formation happened, which I can, I'll be glad to do and see if there's anything in there that says it. But the other thing is, is even if there is and it's mandated, it has to be quarterly. You could have monthly meetings. They would just be special meetings. You know what I'm saying? I, and I post it as such. We could call them special noise meetings. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. But well, um, we, I'll check because yeah. I don't know if there's any standard. We did. We used to meet monthly. Did we not? Pat, am I making that up? I sure thought no. we did. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't remember them being monthly. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm wrong. They, they, they've always been quarterly that I've been on, and I've been doing this for 37 years. So I'll double check everybody and let you know. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I want to pick up on something that Helena said, because it kind of got my brain going in a weird tangent. So I don't know if Barry may know this. Barry, where do I go online? I assume I can find some kind of financial audit. The fi there have, you, have, you must, CAA must have audits. There must be some kind of financial oversight of CAA. Where do I go to get that? Uh that you can you can get you can go to the uh, Alex would probably provide that information or Alex, I can get it for you. Sure. I mean, yeah. It's public. You can, it's public you can now. Go to www.ctairports.org, um, and there's a link. There's a link for financial information there, and the audits are are all posted there. What might be really interesting is to get a forensic accountant, like they're my new gods. Uh, and get them kind of fired up to looking under the covers at what's going on at CAA. And if nothing else, it might just give them enough of a buzz overhead to compensate for what we've got going on overhead. Okay, anything else? I'm just trying to look. Um... I think that's it. I've got a number of items I've got to research. Matt, you're going to take a look at um, flight, flight percentages, percentages of yeah, uh, flight school versus everything else and get that to me and I'll get it to the committee. Uh, and then Alex, you're going to talk uh, to Kevin about concerns that have been voiced. And that's I'm correct. just trying to see. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and the other thing, obviously, is I will check to see about quarterly versus monthly and get back to the group. Can I just ask one question of Alex, sure, I believe sure. is his name. Um, so the things that we've written down, are you going to, um, the, the um, comments that, and concerns that you're going to share with Kevin Dillon, will you be returning to the next meeting and give us feedback from that meeting? Or is this all going into the, the, the clouds? Is this just going to disappear? I, I, I don't know what the plan is for the next meeting. The CAA will will be will be represented, sure, surely. Um, but I, I don't know the exact plans um, internally with the for the for the next meeting. I well, then know. I would like to request. I'm requesting that this that the the concerns that we brought up should be in writing. We should get something back with a response. Okay, I will bring that back. Yeah, and Alex and I talk quite a bit, so I'll make sure I'll follow up with him, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else? Could I just um, say one thing quickly? Yeah, is this Steve again? 
Yes, I just want to say it was a real pleasure being with you guys tonight. I really enjoyed it. All the best to everybody. Thank you, Steve. We welcome you. Um, and I don't know if we will meet between now and uh, January. If, if we don't, everybody have a great holiday season. Um, and if we do, then we'll see each other again. And I'm sure I'll see some of you at council meetings. So um, I think with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Put a motion out there to adjourn. Second, Thanks, Bobby DeBella. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very, very much. And uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Bye, y'all. Thank you, right. Bonnie. Thank you. Welcome Bye. back Everybody. to Weathersfield. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome Bonnie. back, Bonnie. Thank Bye. you. Yes. Can you help me turn this off now?